Hey everyone, welcome to our Preps on 11 Web Extra as we get ready for week one of the high school football season. Of course, it's the second week of games because zero isn't a real number, but we played real games in zero week. Tyler Cast joined by Scorebook Live's Nate Olson. It's it's football, it's not math, it's not supposed to You're make sense. You're making my head hurt. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, the football. The second season. week of the season, but it's week one. Yeah, yeah, but this time we got everyone playing. Yes. Uh, well, most teams played last week, uh, but one we didn't get to see. I think a lot of people wanted to see Buck James and Conway. Now they start their season with a big test on the road at Bentonville. Just what, what are we expecting out of that one? Uh, I I think uh, Conway better be or Conway better be ready. That's it's you know Buck's first game in Bentonville. Went over to Oklahoma and absolutely dominated. C.J. Brown. The Arkansas wide receiver commit uh, just put on a show and the defense was lights out. So knew they were going to be good. I, I think Jody Grant's team is on a mission. I think losing that game to Bryant last year really left a bad taste in their mouth. They've got Carter Nye back at quarterback. They've got more of their linemen back than I thought too. You know, they lose Joey Sua, but they still have a good amount of guys up there. And you saw what they did defensively against Broken Arrow. So, Conway kind of going into a buzzsaw there. I think Buck's team will be ready. You've got Donovan Amolo, who has won up there before uh, as a, a sophomore, and um, you know a veteran guy. So they've got some holes to fill there. A lot of people feel strongly that they can win a state championship this year with him, just because of what we've seen at Bryant. I don't there, know. There's a mystique. There, there is a mystique. Like, there is yeah. a big mystique, and there's an aura around Buck. And it has been for a long time, but particularly at, at Bryant, what he did. This year could be jumping the gun. But I also think that they're going to be much better week 10 than they are week 1. Week 10, they will be at Bryant. So I think by the time they play that game, that could be for a conference championship. Friday night, there may be some kinks to work out. You're, you're trying to get together with a new coach and, and all that stuff. So sometimes that takes a little bit of time to gel. But... Uh, he's a great coach. He's got a great quarterback. We'll see what happens. But Benville's got to feel really good about themselves. Also, the fact that they've already played a game. I think that's a major advantage and playing at home. I, I think the, the edge goes to Bentonville. Would not surprise me if the game is close, though, because of uh, you know, the, the talent that, that Conway does have. All right, we said Bryant enough, so let's actually talk about the Hornets yes. coming. They pulled away in the second half of the Salt Bowl, as they are wont to do. I think you kind of called that one with 11 on 11. Benton could hang yeah. for a little bit, yeah. uh, but then that fatigue starts to set in. Bryant just rolls dudes out there. We see what happens. Now a different test for, for the Hornets. They get to host one of the best teams in Missouri. Mm -hmm. The two-time state champion, CBC, Christian Brothers College, a rich tradition of athletic excellence there, not just – football, but basketball, a lot of different sports, a very prestigious. I mean, I, I told somebody today, kind of like Pulaski Academy and Catholic rolled into one almost. A very, very prestigious school, academically, a very, very good athletic program. Been on that campus, actually, in, in theory. It's a, it's a nice place and a place that the alumni take a lot of pride in. They've had a lot of alumni that have had success in business, sports. So it's, it's a prestigious program, well known in Missouri. And they've had a lot of football success, and they've got a lot of Division I recruits that have come through there lately. Jeremiah McClellan is a really good receiver, 6'1", 190, going to Ohio State. They've got a defensive end, Bryce Parsons, going to Ohio. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the receiver matchup because you've got Bryce and Adamo, uh, Brendan Bennett in the secondary. It's the secondary and linebacker core are the strengths of that defense. You know, we saw in that Benton game, that they got roughed up a little bit, that defensive line did. There's a couple injuries there. Uh, you lose TJ Lindsay. You just think because Brian is Brian, they put people in and they're going to be okay. But I thought a little bit in that first half, they struggled. So that's something to watch. If, if CBC has a good offensive line, they may be able to push them around a little bit. I don't know what the injury status is. I like Brian playing at home, but several people have told me that they thought Bryant would lose a game this year, but still win a state championship. This could be the game they lose. Um, there's, you know, the Parkview game next week is going to be a little bit tough too. But the the big thing in this game is they're going to have to play better than they did against Benton. I, th I think that in the first half they were very shaky, and uh, if they play like that against CBC, they're going to be ready for them. So I think a more energized team. You know, they, they had to delay. And it's also when you know you've beaten a team so many times, even though it's a rivalry, I think there's a confidence level that, you know, kind of borderline cockiness that 
against CBC, I think they know they have got to play well to win. Uh, so I see that game going down to the wire. I, anybody's game in the fourth quarter, Bryant has had the ball bounce their way many times. So not going to be surprised if they win, but if CBC comes in and uh, upsets them or you know maybe not an upset beats them, that wouldn't surprise me either. Of course, the in-state winning streak isn't on the line in this right. one. Brian, up to 54 games, yeah. I believe, now in a row against Arkansas schools. All right, we're going to stick in the 7A uh, with a team that, that struggled on the road last week. Cabot, not the start to their season they wanted against no. Fayetteville. Now they're going to look to bounce back against another 7A West school as Bentonville West makes the trip. Yeah, breaking in a quarterback, Maddox Bing. We've got another running back coming in, too. So... That was, I think, the the difference. Uh, they had three punts that went over, snaps that went over Sam Deadwick. He's one of the best punters in the country, but can't punt the ball if he doesn't have it. It went over his head uh, three times for safety, so that's really weird. I've not seen that much before, but uh, that, that got him off in a bad position. And so it was like the whole night was really kind of, you know, bad breaks, and Fayetteville was a good team, and they played well. Uh, it's going to be the same thing this week. Benville West went over to Tulsa and beat Booker T. Washington. So they're going to have to be uh, ready to play, Cabot is. And I think a lot of times a young team, week one to week two, they work out some things. We know that Coach Reed's one of the better coaches around. I, I have them penciled in to be a team that maybe even more than Cabot could knock off Bryant because of their physicality. I do think the skill position and experience – uh, showed early, but I also just told you that I think some teams are going to be better at week 10 than week one. This is another team right here. And just looking ahead, I think the Cabot Conway game is going to be really big too in a couple weeks. I think it's like four weeks from now. So that, that'll be kind of interesting to see how that goes with two teams that are kind of trying to grow and different things. Bentonville West has a new quarterback. Uh, their quarterback, Jake Casey, uh, was was hurt in an accident, a real freak car wreck. So he was one of the best quarterbacks. But uh, Dalton Rice has come in and done a good job for them. So um, I think that'll be a close game. I, I think I think uh, Bentonville West will win it, though. I think they'll win it, and the best of Cabot will probably come during the conference season. Yeah, like you said, especially in the 7A this year, with so much coaching turnover and so much position, you know, skill yeah. player turnover as well. We're going to see a lot of teams look very different once we hit the conference yeah. play versus the non-conference. Yeah. Well, and the thing to remember, if you are one of those fans, one of those teams that struggles, it doesn't. It's not like the you know college football where you need to win three or four games or whatever to get into a bowl game. You can go zero and three. Warren's done that many times where they've they've started off with with some really tough opponents and then went to deep in the playoffs. So. You want to win, obviously, but if you don't, as long as you can get better, that's the thing. You want to be winning uh, during the conference season. I think Cabot's got a, a great potential to do that no matter what happens Friday night. All right, now we talk. I just said coaching turnover. Uh, our, our next battle of Northwest Arkansas versus Central Arkansas brings Shiloh Christian yeah. take on Little Rock Christian. Shiloh Christian, of course, breaking in a new head coach as well. Yeah, Tucker Barnhart was at Stillwater. They won the state championship last year. Then they came to Greenwood last week and got uh, beat pretty bad with him not on the sideline. Uh, he was an assistant there. He's been an assistant in Central Arkansas, too, in private school. So a, a guy that's a, a really good coach. Uh, they're breaking in a, a new quarterback, Cole Creighton, a ninth grader. I mean, I, I really think that's going to be interesting because from everything we have heard, I mean, he's only 5'9", 145. He's a, kind of a smaller guy, but he's only like 14 years old. But going up against this Little Rock Christian defense, I saw him up close and personal on the sideline a few weeks ago at the benefit game in Benton. Boy, they look good. The defense looked really fantastic. Preston Davis is a Division One linebacker. Got a couple other guys on that defense or Division Two. They were flying to the football. They were really containing Braylon Russell. He had one run. They were up 35-7 at the half. Uh, you know, they, their offense was clicking with Walker White, of course, the four-star quarterback. But defense was I was really impressed with. And that's where I think Shiloh's going to have problems because of the, the young quarterback. They got to get you. You're on the road, three and a half hours from home. You're facing a veteran defense, a team that beat you really badly last year. Uh, the one ace in the hole they do have is Bo Williams. Bo is a really good running back and linebacker. He's a guy, he's a freakish weight room guy. He's, he's not real tall, but just built very stoutly, uh, runs the ball well, has good speed for a guy that's bigger. Uh, he'll, he'll try to keep him in it, and he'll have a chance to do that. But I, I think in the end, 
the young quarterback is going to have some problems against this defense. And then Walker White, what can you say about him? He's had a great year so far, 63 points last week against Central and did well in the benefit game. He looks to be playing like a major blue chip quarterback. And then finally, our game of the week this Friday. It's a game that on its surface, a pair of teams that, that have struggled mightily in recent years. There's no getting around that. But historically, Little Rock Central and Pine Bluff, the, the two all-time winningest yeah. programs in the state. Uh, do you see anything interesting coming out of this one besides the historical side well, of things? Or, Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe not so much, but it is worth you know, being there, I, I, I think you know, they're not only the most winning here, but in the whole country. I mean, there was a time where everybody in the country knew who Little Rock Central was. We've talked a lot about Pine Bluff's history and some of the great athletes that have come out of there when we did the story on Courtney Crutchfield and Charleston Collins. Touched on what the climate was like in the 90s with the great football that was going on, not just at Pine Bluff High, but all over. So a, a place that produces a lot of athletes, um, Little Rock Central the same way. I think it's cool you're going there. And Anthony Robinson is, uh, you know, the third, third or fourth coach in, in a handful of years. George Shelton, a guy I respect, is one of the best coaches I've been around, could not win there. Uh, it's, it's a tough situation. Uh, they're getting new facilities, that's why they're playing it fair. And they hope that with the new field and field house that they can attract football players to come there. You know, in, in Little Rock, you have a choice to go places. Uh, I think high school football in Arkansas is better when Central's good. I mean, and, and Pine Bluff is a lot better. You're gonna see Pine Bluff probably make a deep playoff run. I know they lost to Grenada last week. I think they're better than we thought they were. Um, they've improved, I think, 30 to seven. But with, with uh, Crutchfield and company, Austin Dendy is a player that's very underrated. I think he's a major Division I player. Michael Williams loves him. Uh, they, they're going to have a lot to cheer for this year, and I think it starts Friday night. But I, I do think it's important to recognize history. I'm glad we're playing at War Memorial Stadium, Arkansas football. Maybe one of the few people that feels that way. But I like the tip of the cap to history, and this is another tip of the cap to history. All right, we'll have highlights from all those games that we've discussed, plus a few more coming your way on the Friday Night Blitz. That goes Friday night around 10:10 right here on THV 11.